new year, new gear. Hello mountain bikers, welcome to Vital MTB's gear show. Well, here we are in 2021, and you probably can't wait to put 2020 in the rearview mirror for good. Well, 2020 was a pretty good year for gear though, if you could lay your hands on it. The COVID-19 pandemic brought with it a double whammy of increased demand and supply chain issues, which means that some of this stuff is pretty hard to come by these days. Nevertheless, we're pushing on undeterred and we'll keep bringing you fresh and fun reviews and news throughout this new year. On that topic, let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see us cover on the show. All right then, let's get to it. For 2021, Santa Cruz has updated its long travel do anything 25.7 inch platform, the Nomad. Now in its fifth iteration, the Nomad has grown a little bit longer and slacker still, although the 2021 updates were more moderate than some of the previous redesigns. We tested the $8,700 XO1 reserve build with both a coil and an air shock, and we were thoroughly impressed by the bike's performance, both up and down the hill. We also really like that it retains a fair bit of liveliness despite the aggressive angles and the monster truck descending capabilities. Check out our review right here on the channel for more. PNW Components makes some very reliable products. We've tested a few of their dropper posts with great results, for example. Now they are upping their game by offering a lifetime warranty on all their products, even those sold before this change was announced. That's pretty solid news. Fazari is on a mission to make sure more people can enjoy a solid bike for less money, and that is perhaps most notable with their Wire Peak family of e-bikes. The range tops out with the 5599 Wire Peak Pro, which is pretty much where many other manufacturers would price their mid-level or even entry-level e-bike builds. Components and colors have been updated for 2021, while the geometry remains very conservative. Troy Lee Design's Skyline jersey has been a favorite of ours for many years by now. It features that just right cut and will happily accompany you out for anything from a trail ride to a day in the bike park. With the addition of the new Chill model, you can now keep wearing it for longer into the shoulder season as well. Thanks to a heavier knit fabric, the Skyline Chill can handle the cooler months with ease. The inside is brushed for a super soft finish, meaning you can wear it directly on the skin or over a base layer when the mercury really starts to drop. We've tested it down to about 46 Fahrenheit or 8 Celsius with good results. With the base layer and windbreaker, it will probably go much lower than that as well. We were particularly stoked with how it cuts off the wind, even when you run it as the only layer. It also handles body heat well, evacuating sweat to stay dry against the skin even during harder efforts. A quick update regarding the cask Defender helmet we presented here on Gear Show last year. At the time, we noted that the cheek pads started to come apart after just a few rides, which was obviously not acceptable for such a high-end product. Cask has since carried out a running change to the way the cheek pads are put together, and they are now stitched to ensure that this won't happen again. We've received a replacement set of pads, and we can indeed attest to the fact that they should now be up to the job at hand. That's a good thing, as there is a lot to like about the Defender to start with. This ASTM certified helmet is light, weighing in at just 750 grams in size medium, it's comfortable and breathes well in action, and there's even a replaceable filter in the mouthpiece to help keep the dust at bay. Bike Yoke is a small German company that has made a name for itself with clever solutions to vexing problems like replacement shock yokes for specialized bikes. The company also makes some of the best dropper posts on the market, and now they've turned their attention to the saddle. But Bike Yoke was never going to make a Me Too product just to expand their range, so they've come up with something fairly unique. Starting off with the obvious, the Sagma saddle is a lot shorter than we are used to seeing. Bike Yoke says this allows for more freedom of movement for more aggressive riding. Sticking with the dimensions, the Sagma comes in two different widths to allow you to find the one that best matches your bum. Diving in deeper is where things get really interesting. The Sagma sits on a pair of built-in shock absorbers, which allows it to dampen vibration, but also rock slightly side to side under you as you pedal or move around on the bike. The shock absorbers come in three different hardness levels to allow you to further customize the Sagma's behavior in this aspect. Up top, the Sagma is covered with ID beads, a slow rebound memory foam type of material that will mold itself to your anatomy over time. The Sagma is built around a carbon reinforced shell with a PU skin cover for durability. On the trail, the Sagma is fairly firm. However, whilst we were initially concerned that it would be too firm, we quickly found our sweet spot and the comfort level went up dramatically over the course of just a couple of rides. Whether this is down to the memory foam or just our butt getting used to it is hard to say, but we're in a happy place already and that's all that matters. 
As for the shock absorbers, they are not noticeable to the point of being able to really feel the saddle moving around under you, but we wouldn't be surprised to find that they do indeed have something to do with the comfort offered by the Sagma as well. The compact form factor makes it easy to move around the bike, while the wide part of the saddle still offers enough support for prolonged pedaling efforts in the saddle. The PU skin cover is a bit sticky, which means you don't risk slipping around on the saddle. Whether you like that or prefer something slicker is down to personal preference. All in all, we're already well impressed by the new Sagma saddle. We'll bring you a full review at some point down the line after we've logged some more miles on it. We Are One Composites is another young company that has been making a name for itself over the past couple of years, producing a range of in-house manufactured carbon rims in their facility in Kamloops in Canada. The Union is one of their newest offerings, a rim intended for aggressive enduro riding and racing. It features a slightly lower profile than the Agent downhill rim to provide for a bit more vertical compliance while retaining ample lateral stiffness. We Are One's carbon manufacturing technique produces a unique finish right out of the mold with no filling or sanding or any other type of surface treatment required. The finish is smooth and glossy to the touch and reveals some of the fibers under certain light conditions. Complemented by a minimal set of stickers, the overall effect is burly yet discreet. Our 27.5 inch set was laced up with a pair of Industry 9 101 hubs and weighed in at 1,853 grams, including rim tape and tubeless valves. This build retails for 1,399 US dollars. The Union rim measures in at 30 millimeters internally and the shape made it easy to mount up the tires tubeless. The factory rim tape job is super clean and the overall build is of very high quality. On the trail, the Union wheels felt very confidence inspiring from day one. The engagement of the 101 hub is direct and precise, allowing for quick reactions during technical climbing. The wheels hold the line and track the terrain with precision, as you would expect from a burly carbon rim. They also deliver a certain amount of compliance, which basically translates to a less harsh ride quality. Compliance is a term used by pretty much every wheel or even bike company these days, so it can be hard to figure out what's what. The ride quality of the Union wheel can best be described as unremarkable in the best sense of that word. We've had these wheels out on the trails for two months now, and in that time, we've simply been able to go about riding our bike. No issues, no snake bites, no loose spokes, no broken rims. We've done our best to torture these wheels, and so far, they've shrugged it all off. Even the finish is holding up really well, despite a fair few rides in loose and rocky terrain. We're going to keep testing, and we'll bring you a long-term report at some point down the line. All right then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.